Hallelujah. Thank you, everybody, for staying with us. I'm Alex Chisnell from the Festival of Enterprise. I'm with Karina Lepore. Hi. Hello, Artisan Bakehouse, winner of the last BBC TV Apprentice series. And um, really massive apologies. Um, been struggling with the tech here. It's all been working fine today. Me and Karina have had two chats today on here, and it's been absolutely fine. And just when we wanted to go live, it wouldn't let us go live. Oh, man. I like the comment about running on Amstrad technology to reference the Lord Sugar's uh, computer empire yeah. back in the day. Um, okay. Thank you, guys. Um, those of you who posted up questions, thank you very much indeed. I um, hope you're all staying safe and well at the moment. Glorious weather in the UK if you're watching um, from here. And um, we are going to have Karina's presence for, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes maybe, something like that. So um, see how many questions you've got. We're going to cover um, her backstory, um, her time on The Apprentice, what things were like with the business before The Apprentice, after The Apprentice, um, what kind of involvement um, Lord Sugar has, plans for the future, how those have maybe been compromised at the moment uh, with the coronavirus. But um, but yeah, Karina, how are you doing basically at the moment? How have things been for you for the last few weeks? Good, yeah. I mean, look, I have a bakery. Everyone uh, will know that I run a, a bakery in South London. Um, so when the first sort of announcement came out, I think we're nearly, we're nearly at three weeks now, so two weeks ago, um, yeah, it was a testing time for myself and my team. I didn't really know which way I wanted to go. Obviously, I linked in with Lord Sugar um, quite a lot, as I do anyway. And uh, I made the decision to continue trading and put in every sort of social distance element, every every sort of everything we could do that the government was saying to do, we've put in place. So, yeah, it was a, it was a test for us as a team and the adapting um, sort of side of it, we've all pulled together. We have put a lot of sort of measures in place. Um, you know, it's weird. It's weird for me. It's weird for my customer base to, to sort of have to, there's markings on the floor, they have to queue outside sort of two at a time. Um, there's no sit-ins. Obviously that was the first thing we, we stripped, uh, the takeaway service for bread solely. Um, and we're delivering to all, everyone self-isolating in Herne Hill and the surrounding areas. So yes, we've had to adapt massively. But the team have fitted well, one baker per shift, two two of us per shift, and that's what we're doing. And everyone's happy at the minute, and I'm happy. And that's all we can do is all get through it. I know it's going to be businesses that are sort of struggling and, and we're all having to adapt. I think the social element and everyone's screen time has gone up massively. That's something yeah. I'm even trying to adapt to myself. And next week I'm going to sort of really focus on that side of things because um, there's a massive opportunity for a lot of us um, business owners out there to, to really engage like what I'm doing now this is my first sort of chat with Alex or, or anyone I haven't done anything like this so I'm definitely yes yeah, so yeah. uh, I definitely need to get more involved with the online element and yeah it's, it's a good way to fill our days I think sort of bounce off each other and, and learn and and help and network yeah yeah absolutely I was going to say uh, another question but do you um are you connected with, with many people like from the um, alumni of The Apprentice? Because I've seen you with like Sean a couple of times, I think. So I've been in contact with Sean a few times who won the previous year. Yeah, yeah. So um, my main sort of contact base, we've obviously got an Apprentice winners group. I've then got a, a WhatsApp group for The Apprentice lot that I was with. So we dabble in and out and we offer each other advice and help. I, I think at the beginning of obviously the COVID-19, we was all sort of, uh, offering the businesses are so different. I mean, you've got mm. recruitment agencies, you've got Sean online clothing business, you've got me bakery. You've obviously got Leah, Dr. Leah, who's probably now moved to NHS. I haven't spoke to her, but she had to then shut her her businesses down for a while. And everyone, everyone is in different different camps, and it's just what can we do to support each other? Um, mm. And yeah, and, and sort of get through. And that's what we're that's what we're doing at the minute. So I speak to to even my new newbies quite a bit as well. Pamela, Tommy. Ryan Mark, we we all still in touch and offering advice as well daily. Nice, that's nice. nice. And how, what kind of contact? Um, everybody always asks me this as soon as I know that I'm speaking to you. How much involvement do you have with it with Lord Sugar, for example? Um, so I try to. I either drop him now. I know he's quite active on like WhatsApp and social channels. I I drop him a WhatsApp every now and then, maybe twice a week, um, just to say like this is what I'm doing. How are you? How's the family? Just sort of that sort of chat. 
and yeah. um, emails i think could be could be daily we, we we're talking about business stuff uh you know especially now with, with these times um uh yeah so that's more of a daily thing emails and then we have like a weekly conference call board call um yeah that's again business facts what we're doing blah 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 how things um but yeah so oh, he, awesome. he, likes yeah. Yeah. he likes yeah. to keep, keep keep in touch with everything um how things are going and and yeah if, if he can again offer any advice and send you down certain routes of what he he would advise then he's very he's quite on board with with that so he's, he's certainly seen a few downturns in his time as well as a, a few upturns as well so um yeah exactly i think people are always surprised when you you say like how much contact you how much communication you have because I've, I've i've interviewed probably on, on my screw it just do it podcast probably i don't know a dozen people who've been on dragon's den and the people who've got investment Again, I like in daily contact with like um, what's the guy Nick from um, who owns Moonpig, you know, like the card company. It was like a daily oh, Nick, um, yeah, exactly. communication with, with yeah. all their investment, which which you know, I think the first time I heard that surprised me. But um, it, it, it's nice to hear, isn't it? I'm sure every individual is different, but that that is good to know given the the breadth of his experience. At the end of the day, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I get that a lot in in any sort of question Q and As I do. It's always do you talk to Lord Sugar? Does he even? Yeah. Has he has even been to the shop? Does he does he know anything? Blah blah blah. What's his favorite yeah. product? Um, but yeah, he's he's quite accessible and he he is there for support and he's on instantly online. If you WhatsApp him, he's he's there replying. Twitter, you know, Twitter, isn't he? He's quite yeah. Twitter. Oh god, don't get him. <laughs> <there. laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I, I saw I, I made me wonder because I um, was chatting to Sean and she was just about I think it was March, wasn't it? Launching a new swimwear line and i thought i wonder how much he's tapped him up for advice because literally like that this kicked in and he just thought wow there's a time to be launching a, a new range and like you know clients for myself why don't i make podcasts for um a podcast agency that makes podcasts for different brands and entrepreneurs and some of them you know big you know uh 10 11 figure businesses like 100 million pound businesses who literally just shut down what we were doing creating you know new content because they had factories in china Mm. couldn't make the products they were looking for spring launches and stuff and you're like well i totally get it you know you're just looking at your cash flow and all of a sudden if the factories in china aren't open making yeah. what you need it's game yeah. over isn't it or at least you, if you can mothball stuff or like you've done like you've been able to adapt yeah and we were talking offline like you know my local supermarkets you can't get bread we've yeah. made bread at home here me and my, me and my kids because you just couldn't buy it so yeah. I, I yeah. think you know what you're doing is providing a solution to, to a problem at the end of the day and I can imagine you get pretty good feedback from your customers, do you not? Yeah, yeah, it's been really nice actually. Because again, at first I was skeptical. I didn't really know. You know, it's an unknown field for for everyone, and and I knew it was going to be a testing time. And and we're in it now. We're in the thick of it. We're just going to have to come out the other side. But um, yeah, a lot of DMs. I get a lot of messages um, saying thanks for being open. All my customers every day sort of thank me and my team for for remaining open and giving them that that sort of daily routine they'll come down i've got the butcher next to me so they'll get their meat they get their bread they go home get their meat right. they get their bread, they go home so they build it into their sort of daily or every other daily routine and and it, mm. yeah if it can help someone's sort of mental state even just to come down and get their fresh bread um you, i've found out massively how much fresh bread really means to people um i knew i knew it was yeah. a big deal before but now it's like it is quite important and it is quite an essential need um more so than i i've learned now more so mm. and and product range wise for you have you had to cut that back or what maybe you can tell yeah. us what, what what you what you offer how many we, had a mass, we, we have a massive product range um we do cakes we do obviously pastries we do bread we do paninis we do rolls filled roll sandwiches we've cut it down massively the baker's just uh the sort of workload i don't want to don't want to kill any of them off so the amount of bread they're producing is the main focus so that's right. that's it's not solely what we're offering if they manage to do some pastries for the day that they'll go in the morning and that that will be it it won't be any of us like we used to shout to them oh we need a brownie or we need some mom and croissants no yeah. just let them do their quota we sell out bread and, and that's it done um we've we've sort of reduced opening hours uh, it's just two on a shift so we just run an eight till four day the bakers come in they bake they go um so yeah that that is it that's that's how we've had to be quite strict but um i don't want to i don't want to put anyone under any sort of unnecessary stress yeah yeah, yeah absolutely and and uh, imagine um 
you've got you know, a amount of like older clients that are probably self isolating and they'd be reliant on you know home delivery at the end of the day, aren't they? Otherwise, you know, they haven't got video. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, so many people I've spoken to, like my mum included, who's like nearly 80, and they've just had to spend the last few no, years learning new technology. <laughs> oh, no, I meant on here. It says, oh. watch or something. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, maybe yeah. it's just David. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it must be just for David. It's working fine. Yeah, everyone else is fine. It's what David. Did you say I went off track. Yeah, yeah. No, I was saying, um, like, a lot of people have you know, talking about technology, like my mum, you know, so many people have had to learn technology the last oh, three yeah, weeks, yeah. be that FaceTime, learning how to do oh, FaceTime yeah. or Zoom or, you know, like Netflix parties, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, even I was saying to you today, we better practice because I haven't done any, any of these. Insta Live is all like, the furthest I've yeah. gone. So anything like this, I thought, well, right, okay, but we need to get that practice in. So I can imagine for, yeah, I've got my nan, my, my little boy talks to uh, my mum and hit my nan every night. He, he reads his daily journal to them via FaceTime. So she's a, oh, right. she has a phone up like this and you can see her nose <laughs> and it's like, oh, bless her. But, um, but yeah, it's learning, isn't it? And it's a strange time, but we've just got to make the most of it and, and do what everyone needs to do. Yeah, and, and, and personally, how you getting on? I know you got a little boy um who's seven i think was that right yeah, seven. yeah yeah so you've been juggling like as a mum you've got like a bit of homeschooling and then now easter holidays keeping him occupied running a business oh god yeah i thought i'd be like this like ah by now but uh we've we've managed to find our feet we've got a routine he, he pinged it out he sent it to everyone yesterday so this is what i'm doing it you know by hour by hour um, so yeah, now we've got that in place. I feel like right, okay, we know what we're doing each day, whether it's the hour of football, hour of maths, blah blah. blah. And then yeah, I find the days go quite quick now. Yeah, like, that was, yeah, once yeah. you have a structure to your to your working week, I feel like, oh, it's first day again. Yeah. Like you know, like it does go quite quick. And um mm. I've just keep saying to everyone, obviously I lived last year we all lived in a house i lived in a house of 16 strangers for two months so with yeah. no no technology no no family so um yeah it definitely we're all going to get through this and uh, it will fly like it went so quick i was like oh eight weeks gone all right uh, back home so it will yeah it will feel tough and i know at times we're all going to struggle but it will we'll get there and uh, it'll go a lot quicker than we than we think right now yeah, of course. You say you're, you're in a house with um, with 16 strangers for eight weeks. And you have to hand your phones in, don't you? Is that right? Yeah, you don't have a phone, bank card, nothing. You just, That's right. You, you, you like literally looked after by, by the production team. Um, yeah. Yes, crazy, really. Yeah, like, I, I was chatting to Camilla Ainsworth yesterday, who was the finalist the year before yeah. with Jan, and she was telling me that. I was like, I didn't actually re didn't realise you had all of that literally stripped from you. Yeah, right? people are like, why don't you work out like uh, google you know the one where you're looking for stuff look it up on your phone like no you don't have any no. you have to use your brain for like it's so old school but um yeah. Yeah, you're just stripped of any sort of normality it's weird mm. and and in hindsight now when you look back what time of year was it again because i know there's the, the difference in the timeline from when it then gets shown on our screens what was the timeline for it you been, for... it would have been now so i'm thinking of everyone oh, wow. potentially who had been chosen for this year and i do i do sort of feel for them because uh they're not going to get the opportunity now maybe next year but it's, it is a shame because it would have been now so april so end of april whole of may and a bit of june that's filming time uh so yeah it would would they would have been probably going in the house anytime soon yeah. it's a bit of time um yeah so it, this is the time and, and in hindsight you're ha happy with the decision you made and, and what's come off the back of it yeah, obviously yeah. i'm thinking but i've got to ask the question yeah yeah 100 percent I think yeah. I'll do it again. Everyone else thinks I'm mad saying that. <laughs> but um, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, awesome. definitely. 100%. Right, I've got um, got loads of questions, and some of them have got to go. Can you answer the question? So I'm going to dive into, um, I saw Alexandra had a question, so I'm going to dive straight in there, Alexandra. Great name, by the way. Have you felt like you have had to give away produce, as I was told, to make my virtual events free from customers getting no government funding. Everyone expects freebies or donations to the NHS, but we're all spending a lot of time trying to connect our customers over Zoom. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, like we've sort of touched on, every every sort of business element is gonna be uh, different. Um, I haven't had, we've, we at the start, we offered discounts for NHS workers, but it, it's yeah. a different sort of thing with, with us. We don't get, 
I'm not I'm not based right on top of a hospital or near any anything that's open. The thing open to me is I've got Sainsbury's local and a butcher next door. Um, yeah. Apart from that, that is it. So I mean, going forward, I'm I'm thinking about potentially running some some sort of online competitions and getting 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 a bit more engaged because maybe I am maybe I should be pushing more, but. Um, it's it's pretty similar at the minute we any waste we do get we was delivering to the soup kitchen in brixton now we sort of deliver to to king's hospital but there's very minimal waste i'm I'm finding it i don't even really have much to give away um yeah. but yeah i i do get it i i know from my son he does football and his coaches i know that field is struggling because they're having to offer free online sessions where they would be getting their 50 pound for private sessions personal sessions yeah. so i do get that businesses are going to have to sort of adapt but i think if you can sort of uh what he seems uh to be getting actually from his 50 plus people tuning each day is uh, more people so i now tune into this new coach and uh mm. i'm you know people are dming him saying oh after this is done i feel like i know you i'll i'll then join and it's more of a support thing so maybe if you are giving your free sessions for now or it's to to incline your customers to be loyal and maintain after all this that they will they will stay with you maybe you'll see new new people as well yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I was saying um, yesterday that I think what, whatever you can do to stay in touch with your existing customer base at this time so that when things change and they will change, you're the one at the forefront of their minds, yeah. then th then that's going to make a difference. Those who, are, you know, thrown in the towel now and say, oh, it's all gone, what can I do? Um, you know, never give up hope. Things will change. Yeah. Things will come yeah. again. Um, yeah. I mean, my, my girls, they, they do, they dance um, literally four or five different classes every week and they managed to switch it straight away onto Zoom. So I've got one daughter in the front room, one in the in the other room, both on laptops, both doing dance classes. Yeah. And the only thing that surprised me to start with was that, was that they kept the pricing the same. And I thought that was quite strong to mm. start with because mm. you're not getting the same level no. of... Yeah teaching but i can understand why she did that she's got a business to run and she's yeah. still in the dance studio teaching it but just to a laptop so she's still yeah. paying with overhead so i get it yeah um so i think the more people are able to do that um and yes it's a saturated market if you're a personal trainer for example but i think things like that dance classes online music classes online anything yeah. you can do like that uh, somebody yesterday on a webinar was doing like dog grooming online yeah. teaching yeah. people to do that yeah um, i mean if, if it's a business that has the, even the opportunity like yeah pts the football coaches the dance people then they can still you can still maintain your business it will be a lot tougher yes and you won't have that I I interaction like physically right there but i mean if we was doing a little dance now i'll be all right i'll copy you shall we well you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, i'm not on tiktok <laughs> uh there was a question about online would you ever consider online delivery corey says uh it, it was uh, it was a consideration i put it in the business plan uh so it has gone through my mind at some point i just don't know i know people would think now is a great time to jump on it however i just don't know i don't know whether i don't want to go into anything now that i can't achieve successfully so if i was to suddenly jump onto uber eats and and it was we did have a massive influx of orders and the staff are going oh my god they're coming left right and center and then the baker goes down because he he's he, fatigued can't yeah. produce this much then i just feel like it would be a risk that i'm not willing to take yet but it was in my business plan i did put it in my model that we would eventually be on uber eats and deliver and i am delivering locally so um i have got two members of my team that go out and we do deliver bread locally um as far as sort of locally can expand um but nothing sort of uber eats or deliverers yet yeah, I, I think um, I think Piers Lenny was saying this ex um, Dragon Den investor who I had the other day, and it, Piers was saying, um, I, I, I think you should if, if it's part of your business plan long term, then do it. But if you're literally just doing it for the next you know four to eight weeks, what, what what's the point in the great scheme of things? Yeah. You know, you're going to throw things off from your normal processes yeah. and the systems you have exactly as you've articulated. Yeah. You know, to be honest, yeah. Um, got a bread question. I don't know if you can answer this. How much uh, ah! knowledge you've got on the bread side of things? Um, um, Probably not. My friends are developing their own sourdough starter instead of yeast to make bread during lockdown. Any tips that you've got for them? Or do you have to pass that one on and come back to them? 
if they're doing it, then that they're already doing it, aren't they? Are they doing it? I need to know if they're or are they wanting to do it. So if they're already the the starter needs to be fed. I know that if you don't feed, that starter will die, and then you'll have to go and start again, and then that's a half another twenty four hours to forty eight hours of the fermentation. I know that sort of that steps. Um, if you DM me after, maybe on Instagram, whoever asked the question, then I'll I'll run back to one of the bakers if you need some baker tips. Um, right. But that's my sort of tips. I know you need to feed a star and yeah, sourdough. People make sourdough at home though, so I know it, this is a. I thing. love sourdough. It's my favorite. Yeah. My yeah. Favorite. Um, Daniel oh, says, "Hi, Karina. What are you doing now to prepare for the end of the virus, and how will you make sure you take advantage of what could be a very buoyant time for your?" industry great question yeah yeah and i mean it, it is a good time for the industry and we can't um shy away from it and that's what i, I sort of was explaining to alex earlier that i was a bit nervous at first you know you, who knows this is such the fear of unknown and i didn't really know what route i wanted to play but now i'm seeing it as yeah i'm open i put the right precautions in place um i'm going to be sort of thinking forward for, for coming out the other end. And that's what I'm going to start to do this week. I've got someone in, in place to help me manage sort of social channels now. Definitely going to get online, do some more sort of things, interactive, exactly like we were talking about interactive businesses. Because mine, I was thinking, what can I do? I've got a bakery. Okay, great for the local people. But what about if you are stuck at home and you want to make a gingerbread man? I can do that. So I'm going to start sort of putting some classes in place, some Insta Live classes from next week, getting more interactive with my customers just right. keeping them keeping them interested keeping everyone excited that we will get through this together yes you're at home but you can you know i'll help you we'll do an hour session look this is this is like half an hour gone already isn't it and it's yeah it's interactive and it is good to do um and keep people talking keep people do being creative yeah and if i can help do that um then that's what that's what i'm going to do and I, I can see a light at the end of the tunnel it's it's strange for us all you know my team are great they're very upbeat they're they're very positive and we've always been like that so we'll get through it together and that's that's how i'm like seeing the, the sort of light nice um, I, I think this one you, you probably answered most of this but I'll, I'll i'll give it a shout out anyway um from alex who says um we saw this one earlier i was rooting for you to win the apprentice can i ask if you're doing anything virtually uh, whilst your bakeries are closed, we, we know the answer to that. I, I don't know if you're doing deliveries. Yes, you are. But in terms yeah. of any other webinars or Facebook Live, so it's kind of answered you. You preempted that one there, Karina, there. Yeah, um, I It would be good to find out what angle you're going to take. I'm 36 and run a social events organisation for over 50s, and I'm trying to use Zoom for them, but it's slow progress. I mean, hey, I mean, my take on this is, you know, it's slow progress for everybody to get up and running. Um, you know, Festival of Enterprise is a physical event, the two biggest, um, mm -hmm. you know, events, places in the UK at the NEC and Olympia, and we had to pivot and we just thought, you know, if we can't have our event at the end of April, then what can we do to keep our audience engaged while everybody's at home in lockdown? Mm -hmm. Let's bring them online, let's bring as many of our speakers online as we can, as many of our sponsors and partners online, and keep the conversation going, you know, provide solutions to problems that businesses are having because everyone's having to adapt it's all brand new for everybody it's completely new and you know the last financial crisis that was 12 years ago man that's such a long time ago for a lot of people mm -hmm. um so yeah i don't know if you want to add anything that you're doing with regards to that you said you've got somebody um i mean you've got a platform haven't you at the end of the day with like what forty thousand plus people and then i imagine that yeah. The business has got um, followers as well that you can you can really leverage that. But you know, hey, you know, you're a mum, you've got a son at home, you're running a business, yeah. you've got a lot to do. So I think gradually, yeah, right. yeah, it's like anything in life. Like you know, even you can put it back to to applying for the apprentice. I just sort of was winging it, and then when it came to him was saying, "Well, you need a business plan," and I was like, "I've never made a business plan." So it's finding your feet, and again with this with the, with the virus and the the new changing times, it's just having to find your feet. So I think if you just take time out, like I've took the two weeks now, I know what I want to do. Built I've built a plan going forward. Whether it's another two weeks, two months now, at least I know I have a structure in place, and I know how to bring my business forward, so we can see get out on the other side. Yeah. But it's about planning, I think, and adapting to that change. It is, and I, I listen to um, podcast Fern Cotton's Happy Place, which which I love, and she had um, Joe Wicks on there, who was, you know, uh, we were doing the um, does the kids workout every morning, you know, nine nine a.m. And I think mm. the first first time he ever did like an online class, he had like two people, 
and mm. now you know eight years later which isn't a massive amount of time in the great scheme eight years later he's getting over a million people mm. watching wow. his live stream yeah. from all over the world so yeah. it's like any of this you know and, and, and again you know my podcast is an example like two 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 downloads in week one and now three years later it's 145 countries around the world i mean it's nuts if I, if you if you just are consistent i think build mm. momentum um and you, you you've got a great outlet there that you can do something even if it's like you said like half an hour a day i saw sabrina stocker we had had her on yesterday she's doing something like every day on um on, on her platform there on mm. insta and um it just builds over time i think it's a, it's a great yeah. thing to do at the moment yeah yeah i agree a um, bunch of more questions have come in while I've been wittering away to myself there. Um, would you ever consider expanding the business, i.e. opening in other locations? That was something I was going to ask you before. Like what in general business plans have you, have yeah. you had, have you had to adapt? Like what were your 2020, 2021 plans? Oh, it was all, I was like, I went into 2020, like probably most of the people in here and most people that I know, uh, oh, this is my year. I had yeah. such a good plan. I was like, this is it. Bought a yeah. good journal. I was like, 2020 planner. And now it's like, ah, oh, nothing's in the week. Um, yeah, no new shops. So, yeah, I had found two great locations. Um, yeah, but again, what can we do? We're in this. Uh, we have to. We have to get on with it. I'm not going to dwell and be like, oh. In, if anything, I've managed to flip it now to the sort of blessing in disguise that the two new sites that I had found, um, and I was about to start fitting them out, signing leases. It was really, all sort of, yeah, wow. I was just okay. getting into it, and then yeah. this is it. But blessing in disguise that I hadn't signed any leases and that I hadn't fitted them out. So if I was in there, they would be shut because they would be solely coffee shops. I wasn't going to put bakeries on site. So I'm seeing it as I'm going to focus solely on Hearn Hill now, whether it be that for the whole year, uh, the other sites were Beckenham and Brixton, um, whether whether they, they go ahead or not this year, maybe it'll be next year, but I'm sure the landlord's not going to be in, in no one's going to be rushing to take the sites anytime soon. So no. I'm hoping that I'll manage to do it at some point after, after everything. Yeah, and I think you're right um, that you just take that as a, as a lesson learned and a blessing in disguise that you, you weren't in a in that kind of situation where you've got two brand new shops. Um, oh yeah, and and other people would have made that mistake clearly. Um, have you? Yeah. So to to answer me, the thinking behind that is quite interesting. So there were just going to be coffee shops. So I was going to. So I, I pr proposed to Lord Sugar during the apprentice process that Hearn Hill would act as a hub for the yes. next. Two slash free, but that's pushing it. Two new shops. Um, twenty twenty, get the two new shops, and we was on on track to to sort of tick off the business plan. I I kept it very um because Claude said, oh, don't run before you can walk. I was like, I'm not walk I'm not uh, running. This is walk two shops. I can manage. Yeah. I, I can manage ten uh, in the first year. But I said this is. I was taking baby steps with it. So we found the two shops. We was going to ship out from Hearn Hill. I made sure they were in that five mile radius. Uh, get the delivery van. I had a new baker about to start. Like I was literally, wow. it was going to happen. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But that's that's what I mean. They were just going to be solely sort of coffee shop style with with your bread uh, there, but it wouldn't have been made there. It would have been yeah. in the Hearn Hill hub. Um. So yeah. So again, they they would have had to to close, which would have been a shame. Yeah. So you just you just mothball it, don't you? You've still got the idea there and the plans are there. And you could easily turn that tap on again once. Yeah. Uh, once this is over and i think you know clearly landlords are going to be biting people's arms off yeah, uh, when, exactly, when things do yeah. open up and, and likewise access to funding if the banks do what the government's telling them to do at the moment because i think they've still only lent uh, like a grain in the sand compared to you know like a million pounds like 10 million pounds out of 300 billion that's allegedly available so mm. uh, i know we've had a lot of questions about that but uh, were you obviously looking like where your base turn hill were you keeping them with all southwest london then yeah so brixton yeah. Is literally up the road it was just such a great spot I, I, I didn't want to say no it was fantastic it's like an arch so it, you know the archways that's where hern hill is so it's a lovely sort of arch under the rail station same with brixton uh beckenham was just a nice high street so i chose them too because they were near um you know again it's it's it was perfect it, it met my business plan and that's what i wanted to stick to i like to have a good plan a solid solid plan and stick to it and get a run with it push yeah. back slightly now but no it's okay and um 
interested to know, a few people have asked me, um, how, how does a split work between what you do with regards to you and your sister, Rach? How does, how does that work and how did that come about? Is the, who right. doing what? Oh, she's always, whatever I do, she's there. So uh, it's quite funny, really. She's, uh, she's always been slightly lost in, in career choice and academically. And I was always the one, the sort of achiever and the go getter. Um, so it's I've, I've always sort of not had to carry her, but I've always, you know, if I went into retail, she went into retail. If I left m and she left m and If I, I pushed her to go be a manager at House of Fraser, uh, pre with them sort of tumbling. Um, yeah. And she went and did that successfully. But then the minute I sort of had the idea that, oh, well, I sort of want a coffee shop, bakery, uh, why don't we do that? Uh, she was still at m and at this point. She went back to m and And then I, I asked her to come on board full time and, She's, she's great with visual layouts, so she was running the visual merchandising of Marks & Spencer. So I thought, well, this is good for branding. You know, that's what my ethos is, that personality is the brand and it will be different. It will stand out on high street. So she's massively helped me with that. Uh, but she, she's day to day. She understands the, again, my whole thing around customer service. She just gets it. And it, it's great to have a family member slash business partner that, that gets it. Because if, yeah. like I say to a lot of people, if you have a tiff with your brother or your wife or whatever, you know, it's it's water for ducks back the next day. Same with me and Rachel. If we dispute anything, at the minute I was disputing bank holiday, do we open on Monday? I've, I've blanketed it now, I've made a decision, that's it. Everyone has to roll with it. Um, but yeah, once she gets that, which they've all got now, that that's it. Someone needs to make a decision, get it, go run with it. And uh, she's good at that now. She's, she's, she's a supportive sort of partner, which is good. Nice. Um, Eddie asks, and I'm, I'm sure you've been asked this before, but um, how many years do you think it would have taken to get Doe to the position it is in now? And when you're you about to expand to, to another couple of locations, if you hadn't gone on The Apprentice, met Lord Sugar, da 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 da. Yeah. So I still was going to do it regardless of the show or not. I still had the, the brand and the vision and bigger than the one shot in my brain. And I, it just would have took a bit longer um so say i went and this hadn't happened got two new shops this year uh got a new bakery hub next year then opened another three then that's fine that's the investment that's that would what that that is what the investment's for uh so yeah i would have just had to sort of flip each shop as i went so make some money all right get a new shop make some money get a new shop would have just been a lot slower um yeah. but yeah everything happens for a reason i'm glad I went on the show and I applied and won. It's crazy. And now I've got Lord Sugar as a business partner. It's fantastic. Indeed, it must be. Um, and, and what do you think your your biggest strength is? You, you talked about your sister there, but I'm always always interested to know about the, the people behind the stories. Um, what, what do you think your biggest strengths are at the moment? Um, I think I'm very, I hear it from my team more so, the, the fact that I'm, um, I can, how can I put it? steer a good ship so i'm good at i've always been good at leadership i know that um i've always been good at running the team and and uh, managing effectively i think and getting results that's what i'm good at i'm i've always sort of oh, how can i explain it since oh, how long have i been a leader and manager 10 years over 10 years say 12 years well i've always managed to sort of find the balance of being humble everyone think wow you're so humble you you know i like to do jobs with my team i don't set them up and leave them and then check back that's not my leadership style at all i'll set them up do it with them you know we talk about their day weekend whatever uh it's, it's just the people skills i don't know i feel like it's, it is a good strength of mine i've heard it a lot and um and when i was in the apprentice the sort of being able to manage effectively in effect people were like how did you get on with Lottie like that how did you manage someone so so what's the word um <laughs> uh, I, I was the only one that, that could do that and i don't know it must just it's a strength yeah it's yeah something. yeah and it's yeah bloody important one at the moment in, or in all times um so you probably answered a fair bit of this but i'm going to read them out anyway just to give them a shout out but eddie says i, I haven't seen a local bakery offer a home delivery service it wasn't something that i anticipated i needed but now with third party companies offering the service like uber eats just eats etc for a big percentage i add uh do you see doe jumping on board so people can have their fresh bed home delivered kind of covered that um or is visiting the shop part of the dough experience which may be hindered with the delivery service that's a that's a good one to get your opinion on i suppose yeah do you think um visiting the shop is part of the experience um yeah i, I look i said dough was all about the experience but what we're finding 
Um, Because I have run a lot of the deliveries myself locally and uh, it is a bit of a drop and then leave at doorstep, ring bell, step back. It's the same with what Amazon are doing with me. uh, They'll either wait to see if I come down or or they'll go, fine. Um, But what a lot of the customers are saying is even to see someone, uh, you know, from down the garden path, a smiling face, you know, uh, they've got their fresh bread, hot cross buns, you know, we'll have a little chat. And, and I think it feels like it makes their day. I've had emails from some of my elderly customers that have managed to email. I'm quite, I was like, oh, are you sure you can bank transfer? And they were like, yeah. I was like, you don't have to. But they, they, people are, are learning in, in these new times. And, uh, mm. yeah, it is nice sort of to still give a slight dough experience and that that smile and that that sort of friendly face. It means a lot to, to the sort of customers of Herne Hill, the, the ones that are regulars anyway. They like to see it. But, yeah. Um, yeah, so they're still getting the experience and the product is the experience as well. You know, the great product that it, it can make someone's day. And it really, I've seen it now that it actually does. Mm. I know if people were asking before, um, I've kind of scrolled all the way down the questions now, but I know a couple of people put, have put before about um, how much involvement you have with, with Lord Sugar and um, how often do you see him? And I'm sure it, it wasn't that long ago that you were celebrating um, anniversary and Lord Sugar yeah, was yeah. there and you were launching a new range. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that was a... Uh, Crazy. I think it was the 2nd of March. So, yeah. Go, yeah. Ago, yeah. So, it's gone so quick. So, 2nd of March, it was two years of dough. We launched the vegan range. It came down. We had all the previous winners of The Apprentice uh, in the shop to sort of celebrate as well. We did a big piece around uh, the winners and what they're doing now. The, and that went into one of the papers. And, um, yeah, it was nice to do some interviews alongside Lord Sugar on the new range and our plans for the year. Uh, how times have changed. Yeah. Um, crazy she's so like this is it beckenham's opening he said it was opening in april i was like whoa even without <laughs> this, don't, that's too soon um but yeah he yeah we was really positive and um i still speak to him a lot uh obviously he's he's now um self-isolating himself in florida that's where he's based um oh is so, it i didn't know that, uh, uh, didn't know that. Uh, so yeah he comes back over to film the apprentice normally he spends a few months back in the uk but then he does reside there so, um, yes, yeah, so he's there. We, we take some long, um, long, long sort of board calls over, over the phone and conference calls once a week. And he's there accessible on email and WhatsApp. So I do talk to him. If I need anything, I'll just ping him a line. But um, yeah. he's good. Yeah, he's, he's, he's quick at getting back. Well, I, I suppose it's like, you know, if you can keep your head above water or, you know, do more than that and actually, you, you know, still turn a profit in these times, you just think, you could survive anything at the end of the day. Yeah. Like you say, one minute your plans were, you know, we're, we're opening the new location in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now we've got something, and here's the new range, and this is a big load of PR from all of the winners coming in, Lord Sugar rocking up, you yeah. know. And now, yeah, it's just all about surviving now. Uh, get through, and then you, you will switch the focus. See, how, we saw how quick it can change from, yeah, exactly what you just said. Oh, we're opening two new shops, load the press to mm. no press survive get through and then we'll go again when we're out the other side um yeah. that's that's all we we can do at, at the minute we saw on one of the other webinars i did with chatting um and a couple of questions coming up from other business owners and, and somebody was saying who relies on china a lot for their production and they were saying this was only last week that they've already seen a massive upturn in what's happening in the chinese factories and the fact that they are producing products again able to ship them i saw you know my old business um with virgin atlantic i was there for 16 years and i saw a couple of the crew that i used to be friends with posting up this week saying like flights to china have started again like for commercial uh, purposes mm. as well so i think you know things are moving in the right direction um all we can do is hope we're all in, in you know in the same yeah. situation um yeah. i think you are you know clearly solving a problem and you're keeping in touch with your customers and the more i think you can you know use that platform that you've got which you've, you've clearly thought about as well yeah. then um you know hats off to you at the end of the day thanks thanks for talking to me so right, i've got a couple of last questions okay. uh, we're just finishing up so i've got most everyone's still here i think we've literally lost two people that's it so um ha, have you had to discipline staff and um what are your weaknesses i'll let you pick which one of those two questions you want to answer <laughs> It's quite, disciplining this team is, no, I literally, there's, there's just, 
it's it's such a dream team. I know it's like such a cliche to say, but they're just so fantastic. I say it all the time. Like I've had zero turnover of staff. They've all been with me since day one. Brilliant. So we're three years into Joe now, and they they love their job. I had one of my girls off in Paris at the beginning of the year. She's like, can't wait to get back to work. I was like, no, Jade enjoy your time and um yeah so we do make it a great place to work and that's really important for my team i've had to discipline staff previously in other jobs yes um I, I, again i feel like that's probably an, an easy route for me i don't find it hard to manage people what are your weaknesses i think it could be a weakness that strength could be a weakness because sometimes i've uh, been told um not control for it but i like to not delegate you know so whether i say oh uh, I'm better at it now, but I would be like, right, right, um, do the rotor. And then I'll be like, oh, why have you put her in there? When you, yeah. in there? you know, so I feel like don't, yeah. I'm, I'm trying not to, to set jobs for my team and responsibility and then s slowly take it away from them, you know, in a, in a sort of weird way. Uh, so yeah, delegation is probably, probably a weakness. That is a classic one for entrepreneurs. I have to say, being it able find to it hard. I know. Yeah. I'm much better at it. And, um, yeah, another thing for, for most sort of business owners like, is switching off, isn't it? Like, well, I don't. I don't switch off. Um, you go away on holiday and you're still like checking them emails, checking that. Oh, yeah. Checking them, are they all right? Is yeah. everyone okay? Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just a, a thing. But I don't think that's a weakness. It's a. No. It's a, yeah, and, and it's the same, you know, whether, you know, I've interviewed like a Richard Reed from Innocent through to a, a, a Ray Kelvin from Ted Baker, you know, like billion pound businesses, and, it, and it's the same thing. Can't they try and switch off? Like, you know, like Ray will go fishing or something like that, um, but it's still in the back of your mind, and you still like go, I still should have sent that email. You're or still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, yeah. same for me as well. I have to say, but um, is what it is, isn't it? Um, if if your passion is your hobby and your hobby is your passion, then you never work a day in your life, do you? Yeah, that's the same. Um, well, Ed, Eddie says he's been uh, he's been to your shop and he loves it. So Eddie, always finish with uh, with, uh, with something nice. Um, oh, here we go. A couple have flown in. Oh, here we go. Last questions. Then I'm not sure if you can answer this. Do customers ever stay for too long without ordering anything? I understand you have limited table space. So are there scenarios where you have to tell people to either order something or leave? So the people are like trying to work away from um, from home who haven't got an office and sit there cradling a coffee for eight hours with their laptop. <laughs> uh, well, not at this time. Uh, not this time no. no sit ins for two weeks. Uh, so, so no, I don't know, Eddie, if you're referring to now with the sort of corona with the virus that we're are my limiting people. So, if you're talking about that, then yes, they come in, they go, there's no conversation. You, hi and bye, hope you're well. Thanks for being open. Next. So it has to be really swift. And a lot of people play play by the rules and everyone understands that. And if you're talking about prior, um, no, no one really sort of outstays their welcome, if that's what you mean. Like, yes, there's a little table space, um, but it sent, kind of manages itself. I don't know how, like the time, like, oh, they'll go and then them not come in, uh, sort of waves. My sister's quite good at, you know, spotting a laptop in the corner and coming over. Oh, do you need another coffee? Having your lunch with us? Like, she's quite good at that. Um, yeah. Otherwise, most people are right. Yeah. Nice. Um, and just to finish up with, Alex says, what percentage of customers are regulars? Well, I haven't worked out any percentages on it, but is a ma there is a quite a huge regular sort of custom base. Um, I'm, I'd have to do a bit of delving because prior, again, to The Apprentice, it was yeah, I would, a lot, I, I don't know percentage, but a lot of sort of repeat custom. And we've, we, we based, um, we sort of relied on heavily for the, the local Hern Hill community. After The Apprentice, we've had people, other people come from North London, Manchester, Scotland, Ireland, everywhere. Wow. And um, people now travel to come to see us. Uh, so, so there we're finding that. It's opened up a lot of doors, obviously, sort of the wholesale element. We've opened up a lot of them, them sort of customers, B2Bs. Um, so, yeah, I haven't got a percentage for you, but there's still, we have a massive sort of regular customer base. Awesome. Um, yeah, thank you so much Hi. for having you, uh, for coming on board today. Um, we've had you on for an hour. Apologies for Ooh. everyone for, for getting started. There's a bit of a 10 minute delay there, but. Thank you. Um, Everyone stayed with us, so massively appreciate that. Oh, thanks, guys. Um, and easiest way to get hold of you is clearly through your, your Instagram, Instagram. Which, is, which is your name. There can't be many Karina Lepore's in the in Karina Lepore, little <laughs> underscore at the end. That's me. 
That's you. Um, you know me if I've missed any questions or anything. That's my easiest social channel. I'm not great on LinkedIn, you know, but I'll, I'll get better. But um, Instagram, I'm, I'm there if you've got any questions. Awesome. Uh, well, wish you all the best. Carry on doing well. And next time, I mean, I miss coming to London. I used to literally come up every week, um, you know, to do interviews oh, and speak yeah. about podcasts and stuff. So um, when I'm back, I will come and visit Doe Yeah, we'll do, we'll do a thing. Pod we'll do a thing, 100%. We'll <laughs> you know what I mean. I do. Oh, thanks. Awesome. Thanks for your time. Really appreciate yeah. it. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye now. Bye-bye. Bye.